So keep in mind that there are cyclical changes that occur via the menstrual cycle and menstruation. There's periods of restricted fertility and that is occurring during ovulation. And females have a limited gamete production. In other words, females are born with a set number of oogonia. Oogonia, these are the female gametes. Females are born with a set number. All right, we don't make more oogonia throughout life. This is a pool that's established at birth and that's all the oogonia females will ever have. Okay, so now onto the functional anatomy of the female reproductive tract. All right, so to begin with, let's look at the location for the ovaries. And if we just take a look, so these are, um, there's two ovaries, right? We have bilateral symmetry. So if you divide this image in half here, there's an ovary on the right and one on the left. So we're gonna zoom in just on one of these ovaries here. And when we zoom in on this ovary and we look inside of it, what's going on within this ovary is that you have follicles and within the follicles, they will contain developing ovum. We're gonna talk a lot more about that when we get to the menstrual cycle. So for now, think about the ovaries in terms of the location for the developing or the maturing ovum. Once that mature ovum is ready, it will leave the ovary and it'll travel into the uterine tube. If fertilization is going to occur, it occurs in the uterine tube. We'll put a big X, X marks the spot. That's where fertilization takes place. Then the either the zygote, if it's a fertilized egg, correct, or the mature ovum, whichever the case may be, will travel to the uterus. If it is a fertilized egg, a zygote, that's going to be implanted into the wall of the uterus. So I'll just put a Z in the wall of the uterus. If the developing or the mature ovum rather is not fertilized, it's gonna continue to pass through the uterus, through the vagina, and out of the body. So that gives you a nice little overview of what's going on in the female reproductive tract. We're gonna be looking at details for each of these structures and looking at how hormones are related and, and how that ovum develops, how the egg gets fertilized, and if it does get fertilized, how the fetus develops. So we're gonna be hitting each of those in separate video lectures. Okay, so these are the functions of the granulosa cells. For right now, you're not going to have a clue what the granulosa cells are. And so when we discuss the menstrual cycle, please be sure to come back and look at the functions for the granulosa cells. Okay, now continuing on then with the reproductive tract of the female. So we're gonna focus momentarily on the uterus as well as the vagina. And I'm not gonna go through and read all of this information to you because you can read it. What I wanna focus on is the wall of the uterus. There's three layers to the wall of the uterus. There's the outermost layer called the parametrium, and that has epithelial cells and some connective tissues. There's a middle layer called the myometrium, so you know that's composed of smooth muscle. And then the most important layer of all for us is the endometrium. And I say that because when we discuss the menstrual cycle, we'll be talking a lot about the endometrium, the, most, the innermost layer of the uterine wall. And then of course over here is the vagina, the female organ of copulation, lots of smooth muscle associated with that, and lots of glands. Okay, so I'll let you read the rest of the information on these slides. So then we move into the uterine tubes, or the fallop also called the fallopian tubes, also called the oviducts. Be sure that you're familiar with using any of those terms. Now we talked about the ovum and how it matures in the ovary. So here we have the mature ovum. Okay, and you don't quite yet have details on how that happens, but you will soon. So once you have that mature ovum, it gets transported to the uterine tube and then to the uterus. So this would be the uterus over here. And remember the uterine tube is where fertilization takes place. We need to talk about the infundibulum and the fimbriae. The fimbri fimbriae are these finger-like project projections the infundibulum would be located right above the fimbriae and they help pick up the ovum that's been released from the ovary. So once that mature ovum leaves the ovary, the fimbriae and the infundibulum, they're going to help move that mature ovum into the uterine tube. And that's done through mostly peristalsis initially, 
And then it turns into ciliary action that moves that ovum through that uterine tube. And it takes about four days for that mature ovum to reach the uterus. So that concludes this